Being a normal boy is a serious liability in today's classroom. Boys tend to be disorganized and restless. Some have even been known to be noisy and hard to manage. Sound like any boy you know? But increasingly, our schools have little patience for what only a couple of decades ago would have been described as boyishness. A psychologist, Michael Thompson, has aptly observed, girls' behavior is the gold standard in schools. Boys are treated like defective girls. Now, as a result, these defective girls are not faring well academically. Compared with girls, boys earn lower grades, they win fewer honors, they're far less likely to go to college. Boys are languishing academically while girls are prospering. In an ever more knowledge-based economy, this is not a recipe for a successful society. We need to start thinking about how we can make our grade school classrooms more boy-friendly. Well, here are four reforms that would make a very good start. One, turn boys into readers. In all age groups, across all ethnic lines, boys score lower than girls on national reading tests. Good reading skills, need I say, are critical to academic and workplace success. A major study in the UK discovered, not surprisingly, that girls prefer fiction, magazines, and poetry, while boys prefer comics and nonfiction. Boys whose eyes glaze over if forced to read Little House on the Prairie uh, may be riveted by the Guinness Book of Records. Cool. Boys will read if given materials that interest them. If you're looking for suggestions for books that have proved irresistible to boys, go to guysread.com. Two, inspire the male imagination. Celebrated writing instructor Ralph Fletcher contends that too many teachers take what is called the confessional poet as the classroom ideal. Personal narratives full of emotions and self-disclosure. These are stories girls commonly write, and these are prized. Whereas action stories describing, say, a skateboard competition or a monster devouring a city, these are not. I recently read about a third grader in Southern California named Justin, who loved science fiction, pirates, and battles. Well, an alarmed teacher summoned his parents to school to discuss the picture the eight-year-old had drawn of a sword fight, which included several decapitated heads. The teacher expressed grave concern about Justin's values. The boy's father was astonished, huh? not by his son's drawing, which to him was typical boy stuff, but by the teacher's overwrought and female-centered reaction. If boys are constantly subject to disapproval for their interests and enthusiasms, they're likely to become disengaged and lag further behind. Our schools need to work with, not against, the kinetic imaginations of boys. Three, zero out, zero tolerance. Boys are nearly five times as likely to be expelled from preschool as girls. And in grades K through 12, boys account for nearly 70% of suspensions. Now, this is often for minor acts of insubordination and sometimes for entirely innocent behavior. Hardly a week goes by without a news story about a young boy running afoul of the school's zero tolerance policy. Josh Welsh, age seven, was recently sent home from his Maryland school for nibbling off the corners of a strawberry Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun. Josh, like many other boys punished for violating zero tolerance policies, was guilty of nothing more than being a typical seven-year-old boy. Four, bring back recess. Believe it or not, recess may soon be a thing of the past. According to research summarized by the Science Daily, since the 1970s, school children have lost close to 50% of their unstructured outdoor playtime. And much less games have vanished from schoolyards. In schools throughout the country, games like dodgeball, Red Rover, even tag, have all but disappeared. Too damaging to self-esteem or too violent being the usual excuse. One popular classroom guide suggests tug of war be replaced with tug of peace. Boys need to work off their energy. They need to be free to play games they enjoy. And keeping them cooped up and inside all day will not help them learn. As our schools become more feeling-centered, more competition-free, more sedentary, 
they move further away from the needs of boys. We need to reverse the boy-averse trends. Male underachievement is everyone's concern. These are our sons. These are the young men with whom our daughters will build a future. If boys are in trouble, so are we all. I'm Christina Hoff Summers at the American Enterprise Institute for Prager University. Join Prager University, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for free at PragerU.com.